Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Addiction Unlimited podcast, where you get to learn everything you want to know about addiction and recovery. I'm your host, Angela Pugh, co-founder of Kansas City Recovery, life coach, and recovering alcoholic. To learn more about me, you can listen to episode zero on your podcast app or find us on the web at addictionunlimited.com. Hello, my friends. Welcome to episode number 152 of the Addiction Unlimited podcast. You are going to love this episode today. I'm already declaring it. I feel great about this. We are going to dig in to this topic that I get asked about all the time. It is such a huge piece of conversation in all of our Facebook groups, our Sober Society membership, all of the live coaching calls I do, this is something that comes up all the time. And you've heard me talk about it on a million episodes. Well, I guess we don't quite have a million, but we're getting there, okay? We're getting closer every week. But (laughs) you hear me talk about the importance of your self-esteem. Moving through this crazy journey of life, self-esteem is the main thing inside of us that takes the biggest hit, right? It gets hit every day, all day long by life, work, family, kids, everything is just coming at you from every direction. And your self-esteem is what suffers, right? You start second guessing yourself, questioning what you're doing, wondering if you're doing it right, telling yourself you should be better, all these things, right? It's all about your self-esteem, your belief in yourself, Today's episode is five surefire ways to build your self-esteem. And I'm sure it is not going to surprise you that I come at this from a different angle. (laughs) I know my thought process tends to always kind of be outside the box. And this is no different, right? As I started reading and researching this topic. And I was reading all the other things that people were putting out. And I was like, wow, I'm in a totally different place with this and how it works. And But I think too, that's exactly why you guys like me and why you keep coming back. Because we do come at things from a different angle. And I try to really give you hands-on, tangible tips and strategies that you can take forward with you out in the world so you understand how things work and how you can use these strategies we talk about in every area of your life, right? And obviously, I'm a recovering alcoholic, so I talk a lot about recovery, and that's what we talk a lot about on the podcast. But everybody is recovering from something. And all the things that we talk about in all of these episodes can be used in every piece of your life, addict or not addict, just life. This is all good life stuff. So before we jump into that, really quickly, I want to let you guys know I've started something new that I am super excited about. If you are familiar with the Clubhouse app, Clubhouse, what is it called? Clubhouse audio drop-in chat or something like that. This is a new social media app. It's only an app. And you guys, it is super cool. And I actually got on there myself in December because everybody was talking about it and whatever. And I got on there. And to be honest with you, it did not click with me at first. I went in some of the rooms is what they're called, rooms in the clubhouse. I went in some of the rooms And I just didn't really get it. So I kind of stepped away from it for a bit and I kept hearing it kept popping up in entrepreneur world and my different groups and masterminds I'm in. And then one of my clients, well, friend, I love her. She's one of my favorite people. She brought it up to me a couple of weeks ago. She's like, hey, do you know about Clubhouse? And I said, yeah, absolutely. I'm on there. And when you go on Clubhouse, you need an invite. If you want to get in immediately, then you need to know somebody that's already on there and they can send you an invite. Otherwise, you have to go on and be on the wait list. I don't know how long it takes for them to approve people on the wait list. I don't know that process. What happened for me is I went and got on the wait list and then one of my friends saw that I was on the wait list and he sent me an invite. So my girlfriend calls me, says, do you know Clubhouse? 
I said, yeah, I'm on there, but it doesn't really resonate with me. She wanted an invite, so I sent her an invite. And I thought, you know what? Maybe this is a good time for me to jump back in there and see what I think. Now, by this time, it's been another, I don't know, eight or 10 weeks since I had been in there. And it had grown quite a bit. It was really cool. There was a lot more stuff going on. And I really dig it now. I don't know how to explain it best, (laughs) but... (laughs) To me, it's almost like interactive podcasting, right? It's audio only. So people join a room, kind of like a Zoom meeting, right? When you're online and everybody comes in the room, your little picture is there, but it's no video. It's just the picture, your avatar, whatever picture you add to your account. So everybody comes in the room and you have the moderators, right? The speakers. We talk, speakers talk about whatever topic, and if you want to come up and put in your two cents, you raise your hand, we let you on the stage is what it's called, and um, introduce you so you can have the opportunity to share your, your comments, experience, whatever. But it's really pretty cool because we can talk about whatever topics we want to, just like a podcast, and I get to interact with everybody in the room. And we did our first one And we just started this pretty recently. Oh, I should say too, I keep saying we. (laughs) So my good friend, Brock Bevel, my new friend, I should say, but we have gotten to be pretty good buddies pretty quickly. I was on Brock's podcast, Chase the Vase podcast. And any of you who watch my Friday Facebook lives, you know, I talked about this in a live video. I was on Chase the Vase. Brock and I've got to be buddies. Brock is going to be on Addiction Unlimited uh, in a few weeks, whenever that's coming out. And we decided to do a clubhouse room together. So it's Sober Sunday is what it's called. You'll have to look at clubhouse and see what time it is in your time zone. It is um, 10 a.m. Central now, which is my time zone. But when you go on Clubhouse, it should show you in your time zone, obviously, because it's your phone. But this is just Sober Sunday, my friends. This is where we are celebrating waking up with no hangover. My friend Brock is also a coach, super cool guy, very funny, great recovery. He's been sober a long time. He knows his stuff, which I love. And we will take a question that one of our clients has asked us and read the question and open it up for discussion, right? We share our thoughts on the question, whatever it may be. And uh, and then we open it up to everybody in the audience. So it's a great way to get to interact live. Again, it's audio only, no video. You just pop in the room. You're there. We talk. It's awesome. And that's on the Clubhouse app. So I hope you will start joining us for Sober Sunday. This is something we're looking forward to growing and it doesn't cost anything, right? It's just another way that we can chat and interact. Okay, so I hope to see you guys there. Clubhouse, Sunday morning, Sober Sunday. Brock Bevel, Angela Pugh. It feels weird to say your own name. But anyway, that's where you'll find us on Sunday mornings. Now, are you ready to dive into this topic? Five surefire ways to build your self-esteem. You guys are probably going to think I'm crazy when I start reading off my five ways because you know I come at this different. I'm not going to give you the regular stuff. We're going to talk about some of the regular stuff too. But first of all, before we get too deep, I want to just give you the definition of self-esteem. Okay, self-esteem is confidence in one's own worth or abilities, self-respect. And I love that, confidence in one's own abilities. (laughs) That's the part I want you to really hang on to, okay, because that's what we're going to get into. And the first thing I want to say on this is where we get it twisted right from the beginning is not understanding that self-esteem and building self-esteem is an inside job. This takes place inside of you, in your head, with the committee, right? That chatter that's going on in your head all day long. We always talk about the committee. And you've heard me say we want to retrain the committee to be more positive, right? Because the committee can be really, really condescending and mean. Like our self-talk is really mean. We get mean with ourselves. 
it's kind of embarrassing. Like even this far in, as much work as I've done on myself and as much as I've learned about all these things, you guys, I am no different than anybody else. I catch my self-talk being really crappy and I can get caught up in the same stuff. Oh, I should be better by now. I can't believe I say that to myself. Well, whatever. Who cares? If I catch myself doing it, I want to get in the solution and start repairing it, right? Recover it, heal it so it can be better. I don't care how long it's been and what I should be doing. Who cares? I just want to fix it. <laughs> That's all because I want to feel better. Or I don't want to feel crappy. And that inner talk can really take you down and make you feel bad. So that is the number one thing, is to understand this is an inside job. There is nothing outside of you that is going to raise your self-esteem or give you more self-worth or make you have more confidence in your ability. Nothing outside of you. But that's what we always try to use, right? We always try to use outside things, jobs, money, purses, houses, people, always trying to use these things on the outside to make us feel different on the inside. It's exactly what we do with alcohol and drugs, using an outside thing to manipulate how we feel on the inside. And how much of this stuff too is ego-driven? All of those outside things, the appearance things, that's all about your ego. That is not about your self-esteem. Those are different. I think we might confuse them sometimes, <laughs> but ego and self-esteem are entirely different things. And I know for me, with all that ego stuff, the appearance stuff, when I was really caught up in that, all of that stemmed from being so entirely insecure and having zero self-esteem. So what I did is I tried, if I could make you think a certain way about me, then I felt like I had some value. So if you saw me in my nice car, in my beautiful home, in my expensive handbag, then you would think I was valuable and then I would think I was valuable. That was my thought process. I have some suspicion it's the same for a lot of people. <laughs> I can't tell you. I can't tell you that that's your issue because I don't know you. But I'm telling you that was my issue. And I'm not that much different than anybody else out there. And what happens when we use outside things, just like me, right, with all my expensive handbags and cars and all that stuff, is then I felt like a fraud on the inside. Because my inside didn't match my outside. My outside appearance conveyed that I was super successful and awesome and happy and I had it all going on, right? But inside, I knew I was a mess. And that's that dissonance we always talk about, those two things working against each other. I paint an outside picture of really having it together, but on the inside, I know I don't have it together at all. There's that dissonance. Then I just feel like a fraud. Now, do you think that you're going to go out in the world and have healthy self-esteem if you feel like a fraud? If you feel like a fake, if you feel like you're faking people out, you're misleading them? Well, heck no, you're not going to have healthy self-esteem. It's an inside job. For self-esteem to be good, you have to be doing good things. Not wearing good things or driving good things <laughs> or, or having good people around you. It's doing good things, okay? If you want to have self-esteem, you have to do esteemable acts. My sponsor taught me that. I'm sure it doesn't surprise you to hear me say my sponsor taught me that. <laughs> but listen, that committee that's in our heads, right? Those voices that are chattering away all day long. Oh, no, my God, I can't believe you did that. Why did you say that? You're not doing that, right? You should be farther along. You should feel different by now. You should be doing this thing or that thing. Or, you know, you're fat, you're overweight, you're whatever, all that stuff that goes on in our heads all the time. The committee is overwhelming, but the committee gets its messages 
from the actions you take. That's where the committee gets its chatter. It's about what you do. Not about what's on the outside. It's about the actions you're taking. That's what decides how you feel on the inside. So if you want the committee to tell you great things about yourself and to boost your belief in yourself, then you have to give it evidence that you're good and confident and capable. And that's really what we're going to dig into is how the heck do you do that? I know that's what you're saying. You're like, okay, Angela, sounds fantastic, dude. How the heck do we do that? And that's what we're going to get into, okay? You've heard me talk a million times about micro decisions, okay? Micro decisions are the foundation of your self-esteem. Let me tell you why. The committee is watching every tiny decision you make. And every tiny decision you make, and big decisions too, but we have way more tiny decisions than we have gigantic decisions. That's why I focus more on micro decisions because we just have more of them. On a daily basis, we're making probably thousands of micro decisions. If you go through your day and your micro decisions are crappy or your micro decisions aren't in line with what you want to be doing for yourself, again, we have dissonance. And the actual micro decision is not the most important factor in this equation. The most important piece is the feeling that's under the micro decision. Let me explain. I always use the example of hitting snooze. And which is funny because I don't even use an alarm, but, (laughs) but I think, I think about it because that's something that is really important to me, right? Is when I get up in the morning, that morning time is really important to me and that I am dependable for myself, that I can trust myself, that I will get up when I want to get up and not stay in bed or hit the snooze button, right? Because if I hit the snooze button, Really, there's a chain of events that happens that can throw my entire day off balance. Not my entire day, but it's going to throw my immediate future off balance for sure because I'm going to be behind. I'm already starting my day behind. And then what ammunition does that give the committee? The committee, right from the time you wake up after you hit the snooze button two or three times, the committee's already going, I can't believe you did that. I can't believe you hit the snooze. Now you're going to be late. You're going to have to rush around. You don't have time to do everything. You're going to have to rush getting the kids off. You don't get to relax with them, right? The committee already, one itty bitty tiny decision, and you've already given the committee a slew of ammunition to use against you. So you see what I'm saying? It's not the actual hitting the snooze. It's that hitting the snooze is me being lazy and not honoring myself. Well, how am I going to feel good about myself if I don't honor myself? If I'm not dependable for myself, how am I going to feel good about myself? You see how this connects? So let's talk about some other micro decisions that can break you down. Are you selfish? Well, of course we are. We're human beings. (laughs) We're all selfish. It's just part of the human condition. But selfishness, right, and really always putting yourself in front of others or not caring, not having interest in how other people think or feel or what they want because you're so consumed in just what you want, that is not going to serve you well. Think about all the messages the committee is going to get from that. That's a lot. Are you dependable? Are you showing up for appointments on time? Are you following through on things? Do you call when you say you're going to call? Do you show up for your family when you say you're going to show up? That's being dependable. When you say to somebody, yes, I'll help you do that. I'm happy to do that with you. Do they know unequivocally that you are going to follow through and do that? That's being dependable. Think about all the ammunition the committee has. If you tell your family, yeah, absolutely, I'll come over for Sunday dinner. Sounds fantastic. See you at six. And then Sunday rolls around and you've been hung over all day, feeling like crap. You didn't get anything done. You didn't get any of your stuff done to prepare for the week. So you cancel dinner. 
Think about that. The committee's going to go crazy with that. You shoulda, coulda, woulda, shouldn't have. I mean, your messages are going to go crazy. Are you sincere? Again, micro decisions. When you're talking to people, are you sincere? Are you genuinely kind or is it just kind of a show? Are you, when you're talking to somebody that you don't really like, you can still be authentic and sincere. You don't have to tell them to F off or call them a jerk or anything, but I can be kind to someone I don't particularly like because I am a kind person. It doesn't have anything to do with them. I am a kind person, so I'm going to be kind. Sometimes I'm not a kind person. (laughs) That can come out too. But how sincere are you when you, even if you decline something, right? If you decline an invitation, are you being sincere or are you ducking out because you don't really want to do it and you're making up an excuse? That's not sincere. Sincere is, oh, you know what? I'm not going to be able to do that this week. Really appreciate you reaching out. I'm just not going to be able to make it happen. Thanks so much. That's sincere. Honest is huge, right? Same kind of example. If you're lying about why you're not going to make it, if you make up 10 stories of why you're not going to make it, or this happened and that happened, and that's why I was late, and that's why I didn't follow through on that. If you're not honest, where do you think the committee's going to go with that? It's going to abuse you all day long, telling you that you're a liar. And nobody can believe you because you're not believable. And that makes you not trustworthy. People can't trust you and can't trust what you say and makes you not dependable, right? You see what I'm saying? It's your actions. And all these little micro decisions, are you answering the phone or are you avoiding the call? You know, if your mom or your mother-in-law or the IRS or the bill collector is calling, are you taking that call and stepping up and handling your business? Or are you dodging it and avoiding it because you don't know what to say? Again, that micro decision, when that number pops up on your phone and you hit decline, that's a micro decision. Is it going to give the committee ammunition or is it going to give the committee reward? Because that's what you're going to hear in your head all day. That's what you're going to think of yourself. And that's your self-esteem. So this is about actions, you guys. Actions. Are you blaming others for things going on in your life, for problems in your life, for things you're not happy with? Or are you taking responsibility and going, damn, I could have done this differently. I really want to change this. I'm going to go this direction instead of that direction. Because all of that stuff is within your control. If you got a job you don't like, it's nobody else's fault. It's your responsibility to change that. And lazy, you know, this is my big one. Lazy, lazy, lazy. This is the one I have to always watch out for (laughs) because I will make a thousand micro decisions a day based on my laziness. And I have to be so mindful of this because this is why things around my house don't get done. This is why... Sometimes I watch too much Netflix. This is why sometimes I'll just get overwhelmed because I have too many things to do and I'll just completely shut down because I don't even know where to start. But really, it's just lazy. Underlying all of those micro decisions is just my laziness. And maybe a little bit of fear. When I, when I get overwhelmed, I do start to kind of stress out because my anxiety will get in my head. And then I got to meditate and really work that out. But it's those micro decisions, you guys. That's what makes all the difference. And it's the underlying motive under the micro decision. That's what's going to change your self-esteem. Okay, let's go on to the next one. Challenge yourself. This was so big for me in my transformation, in my journey, because I will tell you the one thing I did in my life that probably gave me the greatest boost in my self-esteem was going to college. And the reason it was such a huge boost for me is because it was something I never thought I could do. I didn't come from a family of college people. You know, I didn't come from a family of CEOs and CFOs and engineers and doctors and nurses and attorneys, right? College people. I don't have that. So I never, and it's not necessarily that I thought I was dumb. I think there were some years in my life I definitely forgot that I was a smart person because my 
focus had shifted, right? Because everything became about appearance and that outside picture and creating that picture. So I kind of forgot that I'm a really smart person, but I just never thought I would go to college. I never thought I was capable of being committed to doing something like that for that long term. I didn't think I was capable of time management to study, to do homework. I didn't think I was capable of taking tests well. Like I just, college was just not in the cards for me. And when I decided to go, I was much older. I was scared out of my mind and I did it anyway because I was just willing to try. And I was following my intuition a lot too. You know, I definitely, you guys know for sure that I trust my instincts and the universe more than anything. And I really just had this inner pull telling me that was what I needed to do and just to keep taking one step at a time and figuring it out. And that's what I did. So when I did all the little baby steps of getting enrolled, picking classes, all of that, working through all the fears and overwhelm and intimidation through every piece of that, Then I got to college, I got in my first class, and I realized not only could I do it, but I was good at it. And I was showing up for class every day. And I was managing my time and doing the things I needed to do. I was making it a priority. I was doing all of my reading. I was completing all of my homework and not just completing it, but knocking it out of the park. I got my first A when I was 37 years old and that became its own addiction. I was so excited about it because I never thought I was capable And that's why the reward was so big in that experience, because it was something that I never believed I could do. And that's where I say, challenge yourself. What is something that you think about doing, but you don't follow through because you're too scared? I've done this too with learning Spanish, right? I love speaking Spanish and I'm always working on it, trying to get better. This has been a journey of decades, you guys. Like (laughs) if I would have ever really put my all into it, I would have been fluent 20 years ago. But I get overwhelmed and I get intimidated by it and I get scared to embarrass myself in speaking and saying something wrong. And that before would hold me back. Now, the last year, I made this a priority in my life and and I've improved by leaps and bounds, right? But challenge yourself. Challenge yourself to do something, to try something that you want to do, that you always talk yourself out of. Because if you can step into your truth and you can try it and you can face that fear and overcome it instead of shrinking to it, that's going to build your self-esteem. Because then the committee is getting those messages of how strong you are and powerful you are and you have the ability to be consistent and you're showing up for yourself and you're doing the work and you're being courageous and not letting fear hold you back. That's the messages you're giving the committee then. That's self-esteem. Confidence in one's own abilities. All right, let's hit the next one. Set boundaries. This might sound crazy to you, but I'm telling you, boundaries are how you care for and protect yourself. And I know the term self-care has been so saturated in our lives the last several years. Everybody talks about self-care, but I do not want you to be desensitized to it because it's one of the most important things you will do for yourself. You have to have things that make you feel good. As life is draining you and draining your confidence and draining your energy on a daily basis, you have to do things to refuel yourself. You have to build yourself back up. You have to replenish your energy storage. If you do not do things to care for yourself, then you are running on empty and you've got nothing to give anybody. And then you feel exhausted all the time, overwhelmed all the time. You will always shrink to your fear because you don't have any strength to fight it. You always fall off whatever thing 
you're trying to commit to because you don't have any energy or strength to fight it because you're not replenishing yourself. Set boundaries. Set boundaries with your time. Set boundaries with your activities. Set boundaries with the people you spend your time with. Care for yourself. And think about the messages that's giving the committee. When you decide that you are worth love and care, and you start taking actions that are showing yourself love and care, what do you think the committee is going to say then? Oh, wow, you really are valuable. Because you're taking out time to go to that meeting or go to church or meditate or take a nap because you're exhausted or take a walk just because it's good for you and you want to connect with your kids or you're taking that half hour before bed just to read your book, just to nourish your little soul. Then the committee's got some good healthy messages instead of ammunition. You have to love and care for yourself. It is not an option. Set healthy boundaries on your time, how you're spending your time, who you're spending your time with, and how much of your energy is going out so that you can make sure you're putting enough back in. Next one. This is not going to surprise you at all. Be of service. Okay, service. And this really is to fight against our natural selfishness. But not only our natural selfishness, right? Being of service is such a powerful thing because again, when you make what you can give your primary focus instead of what you can take or what you're going to get, that's sending the committee some pretty powerful messages. I want you to be comfortable and happy. You want your people to be comfortable and happy, right? When I am thinking in a service mindset, how can I make somebody else's day better? I want to make sure I do something to make somebody smile when I go in this grocery store. I'm going to, when I come out of the grocery store with my cart, I'm going to put it back in the cart corral instead of leaving it in the parking lot because I want to help out the cart guy because he's got to run around the parking lot and get all those carts. So that's a piece of service. I'm going to put my cart where it belongs. I'm not going to be lazy. I'm going to put it where it belongs and help out the cart guy right? Simple stuff. But when you're thinking about other people and you're caring for the people around you and thinking about what you can do for others, the committee is getting the message that you're awesome. You're not only self-seeking and self-serving and self-absorbed. And in the process of that, you start to really believe in yourself again. When you are doing for others, you will naturally start to feel better about yourself because you're just not being selfish. It's huge. And this isn't just volunteering. This is like I said, there's a million ways to be of service, right? But it's all about making somebody else's day better and being of service to somebody else. Make your spouse an extra cup of coffee or get somebody flowers, get your mom flowers or your wife flowers just out of the blue for absolutely no reason. Cook dinner one night, make your kid's favorite dessert without them knowing anything. You guys, it's service. It's just thinking of other people. It's not just volunteering. And I think that's what most people think when we say be of service is they think of volunteer opportunities. Those are great too, but you can be service-minded in every way throughout your whole life, just thinking of other people. And this will give you such a boost in your self-esteem because the messages the committee is getting from that is that you are good and kind and service-minded. You are not only about yourself. Last one. Nourish yourself. This goes right along with setting boundaries, right? All the same things I talked about. Nourish yourself. Make sure you're getting intentional about what you are putting in your life and what you are feeding your brain. And I want you to think about this in social media. I want you to think about this in the books and magazines you read, in the activities you partake in, uh, even food, right? 
nourish yourself. When you pop on Facebook, are you looking at a bunch of negative people and people that like to fight about politics or be condescending or people who, you know, post all their most beautiful pictures and it makes you envious or whatever? Is that what you're seeing? Or have you gotten intentional and made your social media happy and healthy and inspirational and motivational? See, these are all things that are in your control. You don't have to unfriend anybody. You can mute them. You can unmute them later if you want. But I'll tell you what, this is my favorite thing about my Facebook and my Instagram is at this stage of the game, when I pop on, it is full of badass people sharing incredible things about themselves and accomplishments and gratitude. And it's inspiring, not only in life and recovery, but in business and entrepreneurship. Everything I see is feeding me and nourishing me to feel better, not worse. Same thing. You may have heard me talk about this. I don't talk about it a ton, but I have talked about it a little bit here and there. You know, I had to get a few years ago, I got really intentional about magazines, what magazines I would read. Because you guys know I have my own struggles with food and sugar and those kind of things. And several years ago, I gained some weight and it's been a struggle to get it off. And it's been really, really hard. It's been a very hard journey for me. And I was reading magazines with all the models and God bless them. But you guys, I am never going to be six feet tall and I'm a hundred pounds. You know what I'm saying? Like that is not who I am. I'm five, two. I am a miniature human and, <laughs> and that's who I am. And I'd be reading these magazines because I do like fashion and that kind of stuff. And I'm obsessed with skincare and I love makeup and I love reading some of those magazines and learning new stuff. But as I'm flipping through, it's like these ads and some of them are brands that I love. And it's just, it made me feel bad about myself. Like I will never look like that. I will never be that person. So I had to get intentional about how I get that information now. So now I'm more apt to go on Pinterest to look at some of that stuff. I will Google different things that I want to learn where I'm not inundated with those ads that are so ridiculous. I get mad too, right, at all of the <laughs> all of the dishonesty in advertising. You know what I'm saying? Like everything's airbrushed and like mascara ads and even television commercials, like they talk about their mascara and all this great stuff it does to your eyelashes and everybody in the commercials wearing fake lashes. I'm like, just stop, you guys. Stop lying to me. I'm not dumb. That is not what your mascara looks like, okay? Stop lying to me. <laughs> so I have to get intentional, right? You know, too, I shared with you a long time ago, like when coronavirus st first started, I stopped watching news. Because it was so doom and gloom and it was making my anxiety just get so out of control that I couldn't take it. And I, I had to really just shut it down. So I get some news online from my friends and family. I hear a little bit on the radio when I'm in the car, but I couldn't because I'm kind of a news junkie normally. I like having the news on in the background and just keeping up on, you know, stocks and what's happening in the world. And I do typically like politics, not recently, but normally in my life, I like that stuff. So I usually have news on quite a bit. But when all of this stuff happened and all the politics, like it's like the world exploded in one second, right? And all the news was so overwhelming to me. I just couldn't take it. And that's being intentional. It might mean I'm a little out of touch sometimes. I don't know everything that's going on, but I don't have to be. I could make it a point to look things up each day and learn something new, but it's just, I don't need to, right? I have to do what's best for me. So get intentional about what you're putting in your brain, what you're exposing your brain to. Make sure it is happy and feel good because again, Whatever the committee is saying to you is what you're feeding it through your actions. If you want the committee to have good positive messaging to feed back to you, you got to be doing good positive things that you feel good about. That's how you get self-esteem. So let's recap really quickly. This episode got way longer than I thought. So <laughs> five surefire ways to build your self-esteem. One, in your micro decisions and the intention underlying the micro decision, right? Are you 
ignoring the phone call because you're dodging responsibility or ignoring paying the bill because you're lazy or you're fearful, financial insecurity? Are you not showing up to things and not being dependable? Are you not being honest, right? All those little tiny micro decisions you make all throughout the day. What is that feeding the committee? Challenge yourself. Think about something and commit yourself to doing it and follow through on doing it. Just try it. Don't have some crazy expectation that you're going to do it and be perfect at it because we never know if that's going to be the case. But try. Challenge yourself. Get out of your comfort zone. Set boundaries. Set boundaries with your time and your energy and who you spend your time with. This is so important. Important. I have some people I really, really love in my life that I got to take in small doses because as much as I really love them, they're negative and they have a very different outlook on life. And I am not going to saturate myself in that because I don't like it. It does not make me feel good. So small doses, time boundaries. I don't like to kick it with people who are super gossipy or talking about other people. I don't like that. It's not my vibe. It doesn't make me feel good. Have some boundaries. I am not going to overextend myself because it runs my tank too low. Next, be service-minded. What can you give, not what can you get? And think about it throughout the day. Every nice thing you can do, every time you can say thank you, every time you say hello, every time you compliment somebody, service-minded. Think about the next person and not just yourself. Nourish yourself. Get intentional about what you're feeding your brain. Get intentional about what you're looking at, what you're reading, what you're talking about, what you're being a part of. Get intentional and make that happy, inspiring, motivational stuff. And then get back in your service mind and be inspiring and motivational and positive for other people. All right. That's all I got, you guys. I love you. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Don't forget to catch me on Clubhouse, me and Brock Bevel from Chase the Vase podcast. Sunday morning, sober Sunday on Clubhouse. I can't wait to meet you. Have a fantastic day. I'll see you next week. You've reached the end of another great episode of the Addiction Unlimited podcast. Candid and honest conversation about addiction and recovery. Be sure to visit us at addictionunlimited.com to join the conversation and access show notes and links to everything we talked about. Love this episode? Please take 30 seconds to subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes to help us improve and give you the information you want. Thanks for listening. See you next week.